Hi everybody, my name is Michaela Schick and this is my case study regarding Truman Elementary School. Hi everybody, my name is Michaela Schick and this is my case study regarding Truman Elementary School. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is talk about the problem and my analysis of it. So first, um, what I know, Truman Elementary School and their demographic data. Um, so Truman Elementary School is a large elementary school serving grades K through 8 with about 700 students. Um, they have about 15% of their students who are economically disadvantaged and about 5% are Engli uh, learning English as a second language. Principal um, at the school and as well as the parents are dissatisfied with student reading achieve achievement data. Um, the reading supervisor for the district has come in and um, observed and recommended major instructional changes. And then grant money is potentially available to this school to help them with these reading achievement issues. Um, the things that I need to know are what is the level of experience that the teachers have with guided reading instruction? The um, district supervisor mentioned that some teachers were doing a better job of using um, strategic teaching and reading than others. So I wanna know which teachers are good at it and which teachers are um, kind of falling behind. I uh, also need to know about resources that are available to school with or without the grant. So obviously we have this district reading supervisor, but do we have instructional coaches? Do we have other ways that we can, um, do we have reading tutors? What else do we have in the school that can really help? And then I also need to know about the curriculum. Um, so what is the current curriculum? Is it something that we can still use with guided reading or is it something that we need an entirely new curriculum? So the problem at this school is that students are underachieving in reading, which is frustrating for the parents involved in the school, as well as the principal, and my guess would be also the staff members. Um, a major overhaul of ELA instruction is needed in this school so that, it is, so that instruction is research-based, and um, that way so that student achievement can be improved. So here's my plan of action. Um, as a principal, I will implement a plan of action in order to help the students at this elementary school. Um, and there's going to be three critical portions of my plan. So first, I'm going to review the data and resources, apply for grants, and then implement the changes. Um, so the first thing I want to do is review the problem. So um, the PTA president has wanted me to present um, about this issue, but I'm actually going to contact her and say, I'm going to hold off on that until I have a chance to review everything, and I'm going to contact her um, in about a month with the changes that I would like to make. So the first thing I'm going to do is review student achievement data. Um, and I want to break it down to see which groups are achieving, which groups aren't achieving. We know that as a whole, we're not achieving the way we want to be, but maybe there are certain teachers that are doing a good job and those students are achieving. Next, I want to review with the district supervisor which teachers are implementing the strategic reading strategies like we want them to. Um, these teachers are going to end up being peer models and leaders for the rest of the teachers in the building. And then finally, I want to review the current curriculum resources that we have available. Um, like I said, is it something that we can use these in our new um, endeavors in reading, or are we going to need an entirely new curriculum? I want staff members and community members um, and parents to be involved in this review of data. I want them, I want to hear their opinions. I want to hear what they have to say about what's going on currently in the school. Um, grant application is the next step. So there is a large amount of grant money available to schools um, who want to improve their reading instruction. So that could make a huge difference in the ways that we are able to implement improvements in this school. Um, so I would create a budget for all the resources that my team and I that I discussed have um, determined that we need. So do we need a new curriculum? Do we need more teachers? Do we need um, reading specialist teachers? Do we need reading tutors? What do we need to really help us implement this? and then I would apply for that grant. I would also utilize um, staff leadership to assist me in this because again, um, as a second year principal, the last thing you wanna do is come in, um, act like you know everything and just make sweeping changes without anybody's input. So changes need to be made and that's evident, but that doesn't mean that people don't have opinions about how those changes should be made. And then I would really focus in my grant application about um, how we are gonna be moving to a research-based instruction in this school because that seems like what the grant um, awarders are looking for, and so that's what I would focus on in that application. Um, and then finally, we need to implement changes. So regardless of whether the school gets this grant, um, there needs to be change made in the school. So I'm going to start readying my staff for changes in the next semester. I don't want to just implement these changes on a whim on a random Tuesday in October. I'm going to take some time, prepare staff, prepare the community, and implement them in the following semester. Um, so the district reading supervisor is going to come in and assist with professional development in teaching teachers 
how we need to be teaching students. Um, teachers who are going to use strategic um, reading or who, excuse me, who are already using strategic reading strategies are going to um, serve as peer models and members of a leadership team in implementing this new instruction. All classrooms are going to start teaching small group guided reading instruction. Um, and there's going to be a portion of every single instructional period dedicated to word work or um, like phonics study. So how letters fit together to create words. I'm also going to create um, continuous improvement in this building by continuing to identify data to identify struggling students or struggling groups of students um, who need additional attention in the future. Um, these changes are going to be presented to parent and community members prior to their implementation. Um, I'd like to call everybody together at a large PTA meeting and invite everybody to come and hear about what we are going to be changing at school so that they're not surprised when their kids come home and say, I did something completely different today. Um, I want parents to be in the know and feel like they're involved in this process. Um, category three is promoting success of all students. So um, during this process, I had to kind of think about what would be best for students. So students should be receiving quality instruction. That's a given. Um, because if they aren't receiving quality instruction, they don't have every opportunity available to them to be successful. Um, likewise, students also deserve teachers that feel comfortable and confident in their instruction. So we don't want teachers just to randomly say, or we don't want to just randomly say to teachers, all right, hey, we're switching everything that you do. Go for it. We want to make sure that we're educating them and developing them to where they feel confident that they can actually implement this. Um, we also want students and their families to be confident in their schooling. So we don't want students to be hearing at home, well, everything your school does is wrong. Your school is terrible. Um, it creates a divide between families and schools that we don't want to see. So we want to try to merge that gap. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about how my plan serves all students, not just some. So by using small group instruction, we're going to be able to target aid for our struggling students. We're going to be able to meet them at the level that they are, not the level where they technically should be for their grade level. Um, it also allows for us to challenge and push our high achieving students to go even further in their learning. Um, also, breaking down our data analysis by demographic group, by class, by um, grade level, by different um, racial groups or different um, economic statuses, ESL statuses, any of those things also allows us to identify groups that are not benefiting from our instruction. So if we notice that, oh, our ESL students haven't improved in this new instructional model, um, we can say, all right, what do we need to do to target our learning for our ESL students to make sure that we are implementing strategies that work for them? Um, then this plan definitely resolves the problem in this case because it increases the teacher capacity in reading. Um, it follows research-based procedures that the district supervisor recommended, and it also um, allows for targeting areas for future improvement based on the data analysis, which I just mentioned. Um, my next category is reflection. So during this case, I was thinking about a lot of different things, but um, the first thing I was kind of thinking about was my own knowledge of reading instruction. I am an elementary school teacher, so I teach guided reading groups. Um, so I'm sitting here thinking there's no way I could ever do all whole group reading. There's no way I could only spend an hour a day um, on ELA. So I was thinking about my own experiences. I was also thinking about how instruction in the school needed to be changed. And then I was also thinking about resources that would um, be needed to make these changes. So that kind of goes back to that curriculum or um, those staff resources as well. So do we need to hire a new staff member who's a reading specialist? Do we need to get a new guided reading curriculum? What do we need in order to make these changes? I was also feeling a lot of different things during this case, so I was first feeling like the former principal kind of did an inadequate job of ensuring appropriate instruction in this building. Um, I feel like because this school um, is so far away from research-based methods, and that was something I was feeling frustrated about, I feel like this principal was not, um, pre this prior principal was not doing a good enough job about uh, making sure that students were getting what they needed in this school. But I was also feeling motivated to make these changes um, for the students. Um, finally, valuing. Um, there's a variety of different things I value during this case, um, but first I was valuing the opinions of the parents and community members. Um, a PTA president writing you a letter about inadequate instruction in your building is not something that you want to take lightly as a principal, and it's not something I took lightly in this case. I also valued the expertise of the district reading supervisor um, to come in and tell what changes needed to be made. Um, I also value the experience of teachers who were already implementing good things in their classroom, maybe not the way that we want them fully done, but they already had the pieces in place. Um, I value the experience of those teachers and I want to make them leaders in my school. And then finally, I was 
most of all, valuing the well-being of the students in the elementary school. Um, there's a lot of issues that could be unresolved in this case. So first is, will the school be selected for this grant? Um, $200,000, $300,000, $500,000 is a ton of money, and it could really impact the way that this improvement process goes. Um, so that's a huge unresolved issue in this case. Um, the second is, will teachers, community, and students be receptive to the changes? So are we going to have teachers who say, no, this is how I've done it for 30 years. I'm not changing. That's a big problem. Are we going to have um, students who don't feel that they know what's going on because these are new changes? Are we going to have community members who are saying, no, I don't like this new change protocol? Um, and then the third thing I'm thinking is unresolved is, are we going to have the resources, specifically discussing curriculum here, but also staff resources, available to truly implement these changes? Um, this is something that I have an issue with in my current district. We don't really have a guided reading curriculum, yet we're expected to teach guided reading. So we need to make sure that we have the curriculum resources in place for our teachers to actually do this. Um, the last category is family and community engagement, which is something that I feel that I did a pretty good job with in this case. Um, so first, focusing on continuous improvement and how I'm going to engage with the community on that. Um, first, I took the PTA president's concerns seriously. Like I mentioned, this is not something I take lightly, and I ended up making massive changes in part because of that letter. Um, I also included parent community leaders in reviewing our school policies and our school data, um, and I presented the changes to the broader community to let them know what was going to go on prior to implementing these changes in the school. I feel like this um, really involved the community in the improvement process. The second way to involve the community was through data. Um, so I responded to low achievement, which was a concern for the community by making these changes. I also included community members throughout my data review. Um, and then when presenting the new plan to the community, I would say, you know, hey, this achievement um, is why we have these issues. Um, why we're making all these changes. And then I would also implement a plan for continuing to review the data and making further changes if necessary. Policies, laws, and regulations. Um, I use a district official, um, which is a reading supervisor, to help in identifying these problems. And then I utilize the opportunity to apply for a grant. Um, so the district policies on grant applications would definitely be relevant in this case. And then I also made use of the resources that I had available. Teachers with experience, current curriculum, um, sometimes you're regulated and boxed into a curriculum in a district. Um, the, the district has purchased it and everybody has to use it. So instead of just saying, oh, I'm immediately going to throw it out, I want to look at it first, look at what needs to be done, and if uh, I feel that we need to advocate to change the curriculum, that's something that might have to go through the district. And then finally, dialogue with decision makers who are outside of the building. So again, using that district reading supervisor, he's, um, he or she is outside of the building, but they are a huge asset to the school. I also applied for a grant, which required the support of the superintendent, so both um, decision-making factors outside of my school, um, including parents and community members in every step of this decision-making process was something that I valued in this case, and then finally presenting my plan for improvement to the broader community. Um, I feel that I did an excellent job solving the problem in this case, and thank you for watching.